Thanks for coming back, you guys. We're just going to jump right back in. Problem number four with storing garbage is eventually you run out of space, right? These landfills do fill up, and then that presents an environmental challenge. Where do you put the next one? And it's a social justice issue, too, because nobody really wants to live by one. It's definitely a NIMBY situation. And how far are we willing to drive our garbage? You know, how much fossil fuel is it going to take to deal with our, our issues here? So what I want to do right now is show you our current situation. Here we are at MA. This is Google Earth. Here's C0. Uh, we uh, produce our garbage. And then the first place it, it goes is up here to the San Carlos transfer station. It's called Recology. And they pull out the recycling, or they, you know, the recycling goes there too, and they separate all that and deal with that. They pull out the compost or use the compost bins and they ship that a different direction, they've got to do that. They've got to divert 50% of, this, uh, of the waste away from the landfill. But we do have several uh, trucks full of garbage that are going to make their way. Look at how far it goes all the way over to Half Moon Bay, down the 92. And here is the Ox Mountain Landfill. And it's, you're not going to see it driving by nine, uh, down 92. Uh, and just look at that. It's kind of night and kind of neat and organized there. But that landfill is where, so that's where your garbage is sitting. That's where the artifacts of your life exist right now for a lot of us. And so uh, we've got about 20 more years till that thing closes. And then what do we do? Uh, and so we're doing everything we can to keep that thing open because you really don't want to find a new site. I want to show you. Um, kind of like the situation up in San Francisco. I'm going to take you to where I used to live, my old place. Love San Francisco. Uh, there's Bernal Heights, Bernal Hill, the missions down here. So San Francisco, uh, an enlightened San Francisco, highest uh, IQ per capita, they claim, in the United States. We also have the highest garbage per capita, over seven pounds per person. It's all our Google Glass junk, I guess. Uh, but they have to drive their garbage even further. Uh, and so they go to, let's see if I can get it here, uh, all the way out to Livermore at the Altamont Pass landfill. Let's see if I can get up close and personal. So there's that landfill. Look at how carved it up it is. And that place is getting hit from all sides. So that's about 70 miles away. And I'm just going to make up a number. There's like hundreds of trucks making that trip a day. There, back, there back to dump the garbage. And so you don't really see like garbage floating around because they cap it, but you can tell that they've definitely uh, done some digging in this area. And so anyway, uh, that whole space issue is real. It's like they say you could take all the garbage in the United States and just bury it in Texas, but how do you get it there? But that uh, brings up another issue. Uh, a lot of places, like think about islands and stuff, they're getting garbage, they gotta get that garbage away from the main towns. And so uh, picture trains loaded up with garbage going out of like, you know, town city centers and there's no place to put land there's no landfills there they got to ship it trucks obviously barges it's like by planes trains and automobiles get that garbage out of here maybe we'll even export it uh, in fact just a, a quick thing i want to flash on here is so uh, our recyclable material we actually export that some of it's recycled locally glass Aluminum cans, great choices if you're going for the bottle or the can. But plastic and paper, we ship most of that to China. If you want to get on this article, uh, interestingly, Jerry Powell is, I don't know who that is. But uh, he's doing good work because he's, he's covering an important story. But we're literally sending this stuff to China. They deal with it, our raw materials, and they make it back into stuff and sell it back to us. And then we produce more garbage and we give it back to them. And it's kind of like this twisted cycle, uh, which it doesn't seem very sustainable. Uh, but anyway, so that's something to think about. So moving forward, what do we do here? So they I laid out the five problems here. Oh, actually, one more thing. Uh, and so one thing that is pretty cool is you can reclaim the land. So once the landfill closes, what do you do with it? And so in your textbook book, you read, read about uh, Kill Falls in New York, about reclaiming it, turning into a park. Someplace a little bit closer to home, which is pretty interesting, is Maybe some of you have been here. This is Shoreline Amphitheater. It's in Mountain View, just right down the road. And this is probably the greatest band in the history of rock and roll. It's the Grateful Dead. Uh, and actually, Shoreline was built for the Grateful Dead. But it, it, it is an old landfill. And so all these people are out there enjoying their music, uh, dancing on garbage. Interesting side story. Steve Winwood from Traffic was the first uh, concert that happened there, and Steve Krieger, math teacher at MA, was there, and he backs us up. The story goes is that methane gas was seeping out of this old landfill, and they're actually having flare-ups on the hill. 
kind of crazy. And even in the summertime, still, like when it gets hot, you can smell the garbage. It gets a little ripe out there. But um, if you've never been there before, go check it out. You wouldn't know it was a landfill at first glance. They've reclaimed the land. Uh, one thing they have to be careful about, though, is that garbage keeps decomposing. And so as it de decomposes, it can settle, and you can have the land collapse a little bit. But so just a couple things to think about in moving ahead. So what are some other options? Some places, uh, so you got the dumps, those are illegal, those don't, aren't going to work for us. A lot of countries still have dumping going on though, and that's uh, unfortunate because um, it, unless it's done in a, in a very, very small amount, it's going to eventually cause problems. And, and uh, other places also have incineration, uh, which is what this picture is, and that can be a cool thing because you can burn the garbage to boil the water to create the steam to turn the turbine to generate the electricity. But of course the problem is, is who knows what's coming out of that smokestack. They do have ways like smoke scrubbers that you can put on there to like collect some of the pollution, but you're kind of taking a solid waste issue and you're turning it into an air pollution problem. It is cool that you can, you can you know, capitalize on the energy coming out of that. Uh, and we need to keep an open mind too because uh, as you'll see, some of these countries, like take China for example, has got so much illegal dumping going on. Their garbage is so intensive a problem. It's like, what are you going to do with it all? Um, and so we got to figure out a way. And so if we can do this cleanly, maybe there's some science we can apply. It could be, uh, you know, we should just keep an open mind. But really, the best thing for us all to be doing is reducing our consumption. We gotta start saying no to the madness. All you know, you walk into Toys R Us or even the grocery store, and I mean you look at it, it's all garbage, right? All that all that packaging, most of the garbage besides the organic like yard clippings and stuff is packaging material. And so we need to start um, demanding that we uh, that the the producers of this stuff do a better job in, in minimizing their their, uh, their packaging and, then, and it's starting to happen it's starting to happen uh, we also want to start building markets for recycled goods it's like so we can kind of recycle plastic bottles but not really but what do you turn them into like carpet and stuff there is so much plastic bottle I mean there's not enough markets for this stuff and so if you're recycling stuff and there's no market for the actual material after it's done if nobody wants to buy it what's the point of recycling it and so we really need to support that and so some products are more easily recycled like aluminum and glass can be recycled over and over and over again, primary recycling. Um, plastic, not so much, right? It's kind of a scam, really. Uh, and then finally, what I'm going to leave, leave you with is this whole new way of thinking. That instead of going cradle to grave, which is what most products are, it's like you buy this thing and eventually it goes to the grave, the landfill, cradle to cradle. How do we close that loop and make it so there's really no waste involved? And so that is a, a challenge for you guys to think of. And, and companies that are doing that are going to get my business. And so I hope that you guys will support those companies too. And start saying no to the Lunchables and the Oscar Myers and just this excessive packaging. No more cup of chicken noodle, cup of uh, ramen soup and the styrofoam and all the, the madness and the externalized costs. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging in there, hanging in there with me. Do uh, some Cornell notes, summaries on that, and uh, we're going to call it a wrap.